Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful. Respected guests, elected officials, community leaders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace and the blessings of God be with you. Tonight is a very special night. And it's not just because we have you lovely <clears throat> brothers and sisters honoring us at our Rasul Islamic Society. It's not just because we have people of different faiths come together to show the unity of the community. But all of this is happening while the holidays of three major religions coincide. It is Ramadan, the month of Ramadan for Muslims. Tomorrow is Easter for Christians. And likewise, this week is Passover for the followers of the Jewish faith. Do you know how rare that is? That these three major holidays, these three religious holidays, they coincide together? Do you know when the last time this happened? According to a very credible source, Google, the last time it happened was 33 years ago. Tonight is a special night. I don't think this is a coincidence that members of different faiths meet when our, when our holidays are meeting. I think this is a message from God. I think this is the plan of God that when He unites not just our holidays, He unites our hearts and He brings us together. And that's why this... Tonight, this gathering is a very blessed gathering. Tonight is a very blessed night. You know, the month of Ramadan, as the respected Sheikh Imam mentioned and the other speakers mentioned, is a very special time for Muslims for many reasons. One reason that the respected Imam forgot to mention why we Muslims love Ramadan is because it's the only month of the year that we can have a lovely, wonderful, romantic date every night. I mean this date. <laughs> so don't let your mind take you somewhere else. So this is number one. We come together and we break our fast together every single night. Number two, more importantly, why Ramadan is significant and special for Muslims is because Ramadan teaches us to appreciate the favors of God. Look around you, brothers and sisters. You are surrounded by an unlimited amount of blessings of God. But how often do we take the, the moment to thank God for these benefactions, to appreciate them, let alone recognize them? Many times we don't even know that we are immersed and overwhelmed in so many of God's favors. This is what Ramadan is about. We human beings have a tendency is that when a blessing is always there, it becomes background noise. We forget that we are blessed with it. We take it for granted. We don't appreciate it. And we overlook it. You know, when the, when the pandemic began two years ago, some members of my congregation in the U.S., they came to me and they were asking this question over and over again. And I think some religious leaders of other faiths can also share similar experiences. They were asking me this question, Imam, is God mad with us? Is God mad at us human beings? Does He want to unleash His wrath against us? He wants to destroy the human race and punish us with this pandemic? You know, like the stories we hear of Sodom and, 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 and Gomorrah and how he took them down and destroyed them with fire and brimstone. Is that what's happening? I would hear this question over and over again many times. And I used to always reply by saying this, that my opinion, the way I see it, this pandemic, is not punishment from God. If God wants to destroy us, He doesn't need this pandemic, he has much more powerful tools. So I don't think this is punishment from God. Then what is it? I think this falls more in line with a wake-up call from God. God is telling us that I have given you so many blessings 
that you have forgotten about these blessings. You have not appreciated these blessings. He took them away so that once He gives them back to us, we don't take them for granted. We start to appreciate them once again. You know, COVID is terrible. So many bad things happened. People suffered, people died, sickness, trauma, economies, they fell apart. But at the same time, there were many lessons learned because of COVID. You know, in the U.S., when the pandemic began, the most basic necessities of life that we took for granted became luxuries. I'm, I don't know if this happened here, but I'm sure you saw the videos of how people were fighting for bottles of water. In the United States of America, this is not Africa or India. I'm talking about the richest country on earth. People were fighting for their lives for bottled water. People were standing in long lines for bread. I witnessed it and experienced it. Milk became scarce. I have a sister who has a young son. He drinks milk every day, right? His father, my brother-in-law, had to go for two, three hours from grocery store to grocery store and find all the shelves empty in the United States of America. This was a lesson from God that don't take these basic things for granted because I can easily take it away from you. Don't think that these things just happen in the poor countries, even in the richest countries in the world. If you take it for granted and don't appreciate it, I will take it away from you. And of course, the toilet paper crisis. That is funny and sad at the same time. You no, know, our grandchildren will laugh at us at what we did. People were punching others for one roll of toilet paper. There was an underground market in the beginning of the pandemic where you'd have to pay hundreds of dollars for, for one roll of toilet paper. Isn't that sad? It's sad and it's funny at the same time. There was a funny video that they sent, you know, which was reflecting on what was happening in the U.S. and I'm sure also many parts of the world. When you want to, you know, find a, a roll of toilet paper, it's like you're buying drugs. You go to this parking lot, and this guy, uh, you meet him, he takes out something from his jacket, he gives it to you, he takes the stash of money, and you leave. Toilet paper became a luxury in the United States of America. Now, here in Halifax, I don't know exactly what happened, but I am sure the crisis also affected you. You know why? You know how I know that? Because my dear friend and host, who is like a father to me, Brother Talib Abd Ali, I used to come here before the pandemic and in the apartment that I used to stay, there used to be stashes of, of, of uh, toilet paper. <laughs> now, there's no toilet paper. In fact, there is a toilet bidet now. So he's telling me, look, we have a crisis. You see how God can change everything overnight. This was a lesson. This was a wake-up call, wake call from God. You know, in the midst of the pandemic, when we were stuck at home, bored, thinking, when will this end? Where is the light at the end of the tunnel? And listening to the uh, funny and also sad uh, everyday briefings of President Trump living in the U.S. I mean, it's, it's real sad. It's funny for you here in Canada, but it's sad for us that this, you know, we had that president during the pandemic. And he was telling people, I don't know, to, to go and probably drink, uh, you know, Clorox and whatnot and all that stuff. So in the midst of the pandemic, I'm stuck home with my family members. And I ask them a question. We have a discussion. And the discussion is this. The question is this. When the pandemic finishes, what do you want to do? What is your wish? And to my surprise, and maybe to your surprise, no one said when the pandemic finished for my family members, I want to go on an exotic vacation to Hawaii. No one said, I want to go to the Maldives. No one said, I want to go, for example, to a very exotic safari in Kenya somewhere. The wishes and dreams of my family in the U.S. was all what? The most ba basic things in life. One of them said, I wish I can just go and have coffee with a friend at Tim Hortons. No offense to Starbucks, but I'm in Canada. You know, you got to give credit. Having coffee with a friend became a luxury that we, what, that we yearned for. One of them said, I wish I can just go to a restaurant and have food. This became a far-fetched dream in the U.S. and in Canada and I'm sure over here too. Another one said, you know, I just want to travel anywhere. I just want to meet my friends. My son said, I just want to go over to my friend's house. These are the most basic favors of God that we had overlooked, that we had taken for granted, 
God took it from us for a couple of years. Thankfully, now life is getting much, much better, right? It's slowly going back together. And because of that, we become more appreciative. You know, there's a famous joke, I'm sure you've heard about it, of how a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew, they got together one day at uh, an interfaith program. They got together, and each one was speaking about their experiences with God, a miracle they saw. So the Christian, he said, I was about to die one day, the plane was about to fall, and then I turned to Jesus. You've heard it, but I want to get to the point. That I turned to Jesus and Jesus saved me. The Muslim said that I was one day, you know, I was lost in a, in a desert one day and then I turned to God and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved me. And the Jew said that I was one day lost and my Lord saved me. The point is, this joke has a new edition, COVID edition. Have you heard about it? So the joke says, a Muslim, a Christian and a Jew, they get together for an interfaith program during the pandemic. And what happens? What happens? They get arrested and fined for breaking the lockdown rules. <laughs> so even interfaith programs became something that what? Became a luxury. If we would have had this interfaith program, I think we would have all been fined last year, right? I think the elected officials, they can attest to this. So Ramadan is about not taking these favors of God for granted. I fast for 15 hours, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, but at the end of the day, I know when I sit, I know there is delicious food that's waiting for me, just like delicious food is waiting for all of you tonight, you'll see. I know that when I sit, I'm going to have so much delicious food. Ramadan inspires me to think that there are millions of people that fast the whole year, not by choice, but because they have nothing to eat at iftar time. They have nothing to eat at sunset. When they come to their dinner table, there is nothing for them to find. That's if they own a table, a dinner table. They're lucky to even own that table. So Ramadan teaches us even the basic things in life. Don't take them for granted because God can easily take it away. And God did take it away from us. But thankfully, He gave it back. If God was angry and He wanted to destroy us, the pandemic would have just gotten worse and worse and worse. Thankfully, it's getting much better. I think God sent His message and hopefully we heed and understand to the message and to the sign of God. You see, many of us here, many of you may have been born and raised in Canada. And when you're born and raised in this country, you don't realize how great this country is. You don't realize what a privilege it is to be in this country. I travel a lot because I'm a preacher. I travel and I speak in many countries. And traveling comes with many benefits. Obviously, one of them, the miles that you get the points, right? <laughs> but one of the benefits of traveling is that you get to see the disparities of this world. You get to see the deprived areas of this world. People who are deprived of their what? Of their freedom, of their rights. They're deprived of food, of water, of the basic necessities of life. I have traveled to 40 countries, brothers. I even have a app, an app where I track it, by the way. 40 countries in the world. And I am certain when I tell you that Canada is one of the greatest places on earth to live. Because I've traveled. I've seen different countries. And I'll give you the reasons. I'll tell you why. Number one, one of the favors of God in Canada that we take for granted here is freedom of religion. The fact that everyone can practice whatever they preach. You know in some Muslim countries, I'm not allowed to preach. If I want to preach there, I have to submit my lecture first. It has to be authorized. Then I can preach there because I am from this school of thought. I'm not from their school of thought. While you come here in this country, who cares what, we, what you say, what you believe in. Every night we have a program here. Does anyone ask me what I believe? Does anyone ask me, believe in this or do this? Freedom of religion is a priceless gift. It's a priceless favor of God that every single one of you has here, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't take it for granted. Because many parts of the world, they are deprived freedom of religion. Number two, the economic opportunities in here. You saw what COVID did. So many economies collapsed. But many people here, because of their, what, their kind, generous 
officials and the government, what? They received all these, in the U.S. they called it the stimulus. I don't know what you call it here, right? They gave away so much money. Isn't this, a, isn't this one of the favors of God, one of the benefactions of God, one of the blessings? So many countries in the world, people stayed home and they received nothing. I stayed home in this country while the checks were coming, the stimulus, the payments were coming. Don't I have to thank God for this benefaction, my friends? You know, I mentioned this to my congregation a couple of days ago. Two months ago, I was in a Muslim country. So I took a, an Uber ride with a taxi. That poor taxi, he was a poor guy from one of the, an immigrant from one of the poor countries. So we had a conversation. He was taking me to the airport. I asked him a question. I told him, what's your dream? What's your dream in life? You know what he told me? Truly, my heart broke and I realized how lucky we are. He told me my dream is to go to Canada. I swear to God. He didn't say the U.S. If I'm, I'm an American, I should be biased and say he said America. He did not say America. Maybe Trump has to do with that, by the way. <laughs> he said my dream is to go to Canada. I asked him why. He says because here I make $2 an hour. I heard in Canada I can work as a taxi driver and make $20 an hour. Every single one of you lives the dream of millions of people other places. But do we appreciate it? Do we thank God for this, brothers and sisters? Isn't this truly a gift of God that we overlook many times? Look at the education here. People come from all over the world so that they can study in the universities. Look at the healthcare. Some people, all they do is they complain, I'm sick, I'm sick. Thank God that you have the best healthcare in the world and it's free. Thank God for that. Look at the bright side. I can go on and on as the respectful mayor said, the peace and the security that you have here in the, in, in the Canadian society. You're not afraid for your life. Look at what happened, what's happening in Ukraine. Look at what's happening in Yemen. Unfortunately, Yemen, we've become deaf to Yemen. It's all Ukraine, Ukraine. My love is to the people of Ukraine. But Yemen are also human beings and they're suffering and they're getting bombarded by who? by some, unfortunately, countries who are allies of the West. Now, fortunately for Canada, they cut their ties, or that country cut their ties with, with Canada. But at the end of the day, as we speak, there are people who are suffering and dying in Yemen. Thank God that you live in a society you don't fear for your life. And finally, brothers and sisters, one of the greatest aspects of this country, Canada, and that's why I say this is one of the greatest countries on wor in the world, is because of the multiculturalism that you find in this country. You see the different cultures living together, converging together, living in peace and harmony. You know, there's a beautiful verse in the Holy Quran where God says, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha. O human beings, we have created you from one male and one female, meaning you all have one father and mother, Adam and Eve. We're all one big family. Tonight, we're not having an interfaith dinner. We're having a big family dinner. You're all my relatives. Because we have one father and mother, Adam and Eve, correct? So when I say, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm not just being polite. I'm not just trying to be nice. No, you are my brothers and sisters. We have one father and one mother. So the Quran is saying, treat each other like a family. Because you are a family. And then the Quran says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَرَفُوا And then the Quran says, and we have made you into nations and tribes, ethnicities. God says, I have created multiculturalism. Why? Some people take multiculturalism to divide. Racism, correct? Different races. Put people in classes. The Quran says, I have made multiculturalism لتعرفوا, so that you may know each other, you learn from each other. At the end of the day, each society, each race, each nation has their own wisdom, their knowledge, their benefits, their experiences. When we join, join together, this is when we become prosperous because we can all benefit from each other's experiences. This is what the Quran says about multiculturalism. And the Bible speaks about the multiculturalism. The Bible... In the first chapter of Corinthians, and the I'm sure the Christian leaders can, uh, they can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 10, the Bible says that there are many different languages in the world, and none of them is meaningless. All of them have a meaning. All of the different languages have a meaning. Meaning, the Bible is saying multiculturalism has its benefits. 
And if you want to see multiculturalism in this country, come every night to Ar Rasul Islamic Society. You will find the Arabs sitting next to the Persian, sitting next to the Afghan, sitting next to the Canadian, sitting next to the British, sitting next to the Indian, sitting next to the Pakistani, all having a meal. And, and every single night, come and see. And this is where the beauty of Canada lies. Because you know, Canada was the first country on earth to declare multiculturalism as an official policy in 1971. That's not just Google, I, I went back to the official sources. <laughs> the first country on earth to declare multiculturalism as an official policy is Canada. This is indeed a great land. My friends, many of you, maybe you're immigrants or you are the children of immigrants. Your belonging is to Canada now. Because Imam Ali, the successor of the Prophet, he says, Your homeland, the best land, is the land that serves you, is the land that gives you freedom, rights, dignity, respect. Our belonging is to this country because this country embraced us, gave us our rights, gave us dignity, gave us our honor and treated us like human beings when we came here. And that's why in the same way that this country served us, now we have to serve this country. There's a tradition from one of our Imams, one of the successors of the Prophet, where he says, if you do not thank the created, you have not thanked the Creator. You want to thank God? Thank the people that God uses to help you. So you have to contribute. Unfortunately, sometimes when we come to this country, we just want to take and take and take. I think now it's about time that we give to this Canadian society and we make it better, we make it stronger, we make it more productive because indeed Canada is a great country. Let's keep Canada great. Oh no, I sound like Trump. <laughs> anyway, you get my point. Take care of Canada, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming tonight. It was truly our honor to have you. It was an honor to address you tonight. Happy Easter to everyone. Happy Passover. Happy Ramadan. God bless you and God bless Canada. Mm -hmm.